Hey mamas, there are lots of ways to prepare yourself for labor and one great tool to help you do that is the birth ball. So in this video, I'm walking you through how to use your birth ball during pregnancy to prepare your body and your baby for birth, and when the time is right, perhaps even tip the scale closer to labor. In order for your baby to be born, they have to fit through your pelvis. So having pelvic mobility is really important. So when it comes to labor prep or inducing labor or just keeping labor going, the birth ball helps by doing a couple of different things. It supports better posture because it's hard to slouch over on a birth ball, which in turn is going to support a better position for baby to get in. And it allows you to move your hips around to support pelvic mobility. So by the end of this video, you will have several movements to help you achieve that. So first of all, I am using my favorite birth ball by the birth ball company, which is linked down below in the description. If you don't have a ball yet and you're not sure what size to get, they do have a size chart on their website to help you determine how big of a birth ball to get. Now, these movements aren't going to just automatically send you into labor, but they will prepare your body for labor by creating space in your pelvis and getting baby in an optimal position for labor and birth to unfold whenever that time comes. Now, when you're at the end of pregnancy with baby in an optimal position with their head resting on your cervix is what helps labor begin. If you are feeling overwhelmed with what you don't know about pregnancy, birth, and postpartum, make sure you check out my free mini birth class linked down in the description to begin your journey towards a happier, healthier, and easier birth. Now, we'll be doing movements on and and off the birth ball, but let's first talk about correct posture when you are sitting on the birth ball. So when you are situating yourself on the birth ball, you want to make sure that you're stable. Pregnancy, especially with your belly growing, can challenge your stability and that center of gravity. So if you need to, use a table or a sturdy chair nearby. Next thing to be aware of is the angle of your knees when you are sitting on the ball. You want to to be sure that your knees are bent to about a 90 degree angle. Now, if you are experiencing lower back pain, you can blow your birth ball up just a little bit extra so it's firmer, which will seat you a little bit higher. And that's fine. We just don't want to have the hips elevate way more than the knees or have the hips dipping way lower than the knees. So we really want to try to aim for that 90 degree angle. Now, being on the birth ball is naturally going to encourage a more lengthened spine but you also wanna be mindfully avoiding slumping over on the ball and focusing on that long spine, your shoulders rolled up and back and your feet flat on the floor. This is going to help relieve soreness in that lower back, but it's also going to help baby get into an optimal position for labor. Your legs should also be comfortably in a wide stance, not so far apart that they're wanting to fall in when you relax them, but also not so close that they're gonna wanna fall apart if you relax them either. So just at that nice wide but comfortable stance. So let's begin walking through some positions and movements on the birth ball and let's start nice and easy by stretching out our backs by doing cat cow on the birth ball. So you'll just place the palms of your hands on the tops of your thighs. You'll inhale as you pull your spine in as you do cow and then exhale as you round your spine back to do cat. And then from there, you can just follow this movement with each breath for about a minute or two, allowing for a nice little stretch in your back. As you're tucking your tailbone under, as you do the cat pose, you're actually opening up the pelvic inlet, the top of the pelvis, to create more space for baby to move into that space to engage in the pelvis. The next movement is simply rocking from side to side. And this is mobilizing the pelvis and just creating a little bit more space on each side of the pelvis as you move in that direction. Again, you can just do this for a couple of minutes or as long as it feels good for your body. 
Next is drawing circles with your hips, which is another great way, again, to open that pelvic inlet to help the baby engage. So you'll simply roll your hips in a circular motion, just like this, for one to two minutes, and then you'll roll, roll them in the opposite direction for the same amount of time, like you're drawing a circle with your bottom. Now, as you're doing these, you wanna really focus on tucking your tailbone under your bottom as you roll your pelvis forward. This movement, this tucking the tailbone under, is what is opening space in the top of the pelvis for baby to come through. Next are figure eights. So instead of drawing that circle with your bottom, you're now going to be drawing the number eight. And again, you're really focusing on tucking that tailbone under your bottom as you're rolling forward on your ball. So you can draw the figure eight from left to right for one to two minutes, and then you can move from forward to backward doing those figure eights on your ball, really focusing on tucking the tailbone under as you roll forward on your ball. Another movement that really helps with mobility are letter U's. Letter U's are similar to the side to side movement that we already did, but as you roll to each side, you'll draw your hip slightly up off the ball like you're making the letter U. And then again, you can just do this for one to two minutes or as long as you feel comfortable as you're doing it. Now, if you want to take all of these movements up just a notch and create more space in that pelvic inlet, you're going to bring one knee out to the side while keeping your hips facing forward. So you're not just widening the stance between your legs, you're taking just one of those legs and moving it out to the side to do each of those movements. So you can do the cat and cow like that. You can do the side to side movements like this. You can do the hip circles, the figure eights, and the letter U's with that one leg out to the side. Now, if you have pelvic girdle pain or symphysis pubis dysfunction, this wide stance that you're taking might be too uncomfortable, in which case just listen to your body and don't do it. With any kind of movement in pregnancy, if it doesn't feel right, just don't do it. If this does feel good to you, do each movement for one to two min minutes on each leg so that there's balance in your body. All right, let's do some movements off the ball, but still with the ball. And the first one is super simple, but it brings a lot of comfort, and it's simply to drape your upper body over the ball as your knees support your lower body. In this position, baby is suspended without as much gravity pulling on them downward into the pelvis so that if they need to, they can rotate slightly and come into a more optimal position to engage in the pelvis. If baby is already in an optimal position or engaged in the pelvis, this position won't undo any good work that you and your baby have already done. In this position, you can do pelvic tilts, which are similar to cat-cow, but you're focusing more on the pelvis and tucking the tailbone in and then extending it back. This moves the sacrum out of the way, especially as you're tucking that tailbone in to open up the top of that pelvis. So from here, you can do some small hip circles, starting with circles to your left for one to two minutes and then switching to your right side for the same amount of time. And then from here, after doing these small circles, we'll do nice and big hip circles, as dramatic, but as comfortable as you can do them. One to two minutes in one direction and then one to two minutes in the other direction. Now, deep squats during pregnancy are so valuable for labor prep and doing them with the birth ball is great for a couple of reasons. One, it provides with a little bit more support so you can stay in the pose for a little bit longer 
And two, it helps round your spine and tuck your tailbone under to again, open up that pelvic inlet for baby to come through and engage in the pelvis. So to do this, you'll first stand with your feet slightly wider than hip distance apart with your toes pointing slightly out. The ball will be in front of you and then you'll squat down, wrap your arms around the ball and rest your upper body and your head against the ball for that support. And you can see how here in this position, the tailbone tucks under the bottom, which is opening up that top of the pelvis. Now this can be slightly challenging for some, so just stay here for as long as you can for up to one to two minutes. And then lastly, as a resting position with the ball, but one that still really helps with optimal positioning for baby is child's pose, where you'll sit on your knees with your legs spread apart so that your belly can rest comfortably between those bent knees with your big toes touching. Rest your arms over the birth ball as well as your forehead, shift your weight forward, and then just relax into this position while breathing deeply to your baby for just one to two minutes or as long as you want to. In this child's pose, you can remain static or you can gently roll from side to side depending on what your body is calling for. Mama, I hope you enjoyed those movements and maybe you're feeling a little bit more relaxed as you released tension with those movements and created more space and balance in your body. And hopefully if you are on Baby Watch, this helps tip the scale toward labor. Remember, you can do these at any point in your pregnancy. It's never too early or too late to help release tension and create space and mobility for your baby. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know your favorite movement in the comments down below. Bye, mamas.